That's a wonderful thing. So be with us now, Lord, during this service. We pray that um, that Mark's life will be honored and it would be a celebration of life. We thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the family, just wanted to welcome you all here um, as we uh, come and remember David Mark uh, Bonnenberger. And I uh, just wanted to, uh, I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, good. <laughs> I just wanted to read some uh, scriptures to you. Uh, in the book of Ecclesiastics, maybe for some of you, at least if you're around my age, you'll remember a song um, taken right out of the book of Ecclesiastics, chapter 3, went something like this. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There's a season, turn, turn. Remember that song? Taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And uh, I just want to read that to you. Uh, starting in verse 1, it says, To everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to remember uh, or embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And if you notice in those verses, for every uh, a negative thing, there's a positive thing. And uh, although we're sad that, that um, Mark has gone on to be with the Lord, uh, missing him, it's a really good thing for him because he knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior before he passed away. He's now in heaven. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. In fact, uh, Psalm 116 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We're going to talk about what it is to be a saint also in just a few minutes. It's precious in the sight of the Lord when one of his own passes away on this earth and goes to be with him. It's a good thing, although it's hard. David Mark, Mark Bonnenberger was born September 22, 1959 and wanted to be with the Lord March the 8th of this year. And he was born right here in Pomona. It's pretty amazing. I grew up in Laverne, and gosh, I remember Pomona in its heyday in the 60s, and it was a thriving metropolis. And that's about the time that, that uh, Mark was born in 1959. So he got to see Pomona in all its glory back in those days. It's a wonderful city. Um, still is in many places. Um, Mark worked uh, while well, he survived by his son Scott, daughter Stacy, granddaughter Zoe, and sister Pam. Pardon me? And a couple of more brothers. Dale. And, uh, all right. um, he was a, a PA, a physician's assistant. He loved his job, I'm told. I never got to meet him. Uh, he went to our church. Uh, I remember seeing him, but I uh, never got to meet him. But I'm told that he really loved his job being a, a physician's assistant. That's amazing. He was a giver and a helper of other people. Always would would uh, try and help people out and give to them, never looking to get anything in return. That's awesome. That's a big hearted man. And at this time, I think uh, some of the family would like to come up and sh just share um, a few things about his life. I know that uh, I'm not sure who's going to come first, but whoever is, this is your time. Come on up. And then we're going to have a DVD video. This must be Frank. So, you know, I, uh, I was going to write something, but I really couldn't do it. Um, there's too much crying in between, you know, and too close. But uh, for the last four years, we've been really good friends. And, and I know people that have been there. That, like, she's been here for 40 years. Many of you guys have known her forever. And um, the mark on you. And uh, really liked. It was really it's part of my heart. 
Um, by the way, I'm Uncle Cookie's uh, uncle, and uh, she's going to be with me until her days. Um, I met Scotty and Stacy, and you know, and, I, and it all comes to me. You know, he's the guy was awesome. He loved his job. You know, I, just in the four years, I've heard some of the wildest stories and, and some of the things that he'll hold in his heart forever. And I'm sure he does. But uh, I'm glad that he's able to get that sleep that he needed. And as hard as that is to say, it's, uh, it's the truth. But he loved his kids. And, you know, he loved hard. You know, I did, he, uh, my Harley broke down and, and he insisted I'm going to get to the park because he didn't want to see me ride my bicycle. <laughs> I mean, he insisted. And, and uh, I broke the thumb and for four days. He kept, you know, because he's naming all the parts and everything, and uh, I kind of left there, but he really, really was really talented. And he got me through it, so, you know, I just, we all hope, I hope everybody just has nothing but good things to say and feel. Because he was my friend, God bless him. but I told her that if she wrote something and she wanted to, uh, to be said, I would speak for her. So this is her words. I don't know if you all know this, but Mark was supposed to be twins. When he was born, there were two placentas. The doctor said one twin did not develop. Can you imagine two Marks? <laughs> double the pleasure, double the fun, and at times, double the challenge. I was 10 years old when Mark was uh, born, and in a way, he became my baby also. I remember the day that mommy and daddy brought him home from the hospital after he was born. I remember when Mark was just a little guy. I had so much fun dressing him up like a little girl. <laughs> he indulged me with good humor and he looked so darn cute. <laughs> a particularly vivid memory is of how specific Mark was about his poached eggs when he was so small. They had to be cooked just so. Absolutely no yucky runny egg whites. Uh, Mask in a bowl with a pat of butter. If the egg wasn't perfect, oh, he let us know by vomiting into the bowl. <laughs> We'd all wait with that, with the bated breath. <gasps> Please God, let it be perfect. <laughs> I remember screaming until I was hoarse at his softball games. Such fun. I chose to carry these memories, or humorous fun memories, close to me, and have many more memories like these. Mark was a happy, careful child who always wore a smile. He grew into a special man who loved giving himself to help others. Mark loved his family, he loved his children, and he loved his dog, Cookie. <laughs> Mark just loved, period. To Scott and Stacy, remember what I told you. Listen with your hearts and know that your dad will always be with you. I was so proud of Mark for so many things. His accomplishments were many. I will remember Mark as my baby brother. I loved him and I will miss him. See you on the other side, sweetie. I'm gonna miss him. Love, Dad.
He was a very proud grandpa too. Uh, he loved telling me about Zoe and everything that she was accomplishing. Telling me all about the private airplane ride he took with Zoe. Mark was the kind of person that would do anything for anyone. If you needed something to work at it, he'd gladly give it to you. You could always count on him to be there for you. Mark was always thinking of other people. He was a very kind and selfless person. He'd always call or send an email or a message on every holiday, birthday, or anniversary. I was completely surprised when Mark nominated me for Damien High School Hall of Fame. It was an honor that I didn't feel that I was worthy of, but Mark did. That's just the kind of guy he was. He was always thinking of other people. Mark was an all-in kind of person. He talked about giving 110%. Mark did that and everything. He was fairly quiet and humble. I don't remember him ever bragging about himself or his accomplishments. It was always about other people. I think that what Mark accomplished in his life was very impressive. This guy put himself through Damien, paying the tuition by working multiple jobs while attending school and playing after school sports. Every phase of his career, Mark was passionate about his work. Uh, he started his medical career working for White's Ambulance Service in Azusa, and then with Nip and they were called Mercy. As an EMT and later, later as a paramedic, he excelled and went beyond what was in his job description. I got the opportunity to witness firsthand many years ago on several ride-alongs with Mark. While I was working for Niffin, he treated the patients with the care and respect that made them feel a little bit more at ease with their traumatic situation. As a physician's assistant, he would always take the extra time with his patients to make sure they understood completely their condition and their course of treatment. Mark loved sports, was very athletic in his younger days, playing baseball and golf, and as he got a little older, moved more towards softball and bowling. Mark and I learned to scuba dive and went on many dive trips together. We practiced managing our underwater air consumption while playing magnetic checkers at the bottom of the swimming pool in the apartment we shared. Needless to say, the mostly senior residents of the complex were intrigued by this. <laughs> Once, thanks to Mark's quick thinking, I escaped relatively unscathed after ditching my scuba gear about 40 feet of water. I went in to get some lobster to put a deep hole. It ran out of air before I could get back to my equipment. Uh, so I guess you could say Mark literally saved my life that day. Mark impressed me as a man of faith. Even when life was most difficult for him, he never lost his faith. I pray that the Lord has taken him to heaven and that he's found the peace that sometimes eluded him here on earth. There's so much more I want to say, but I don't know quite it. So I'm going to borrow an excerpt from a speech my friend Mark wrote when he introduced me for the Damien Hall of Fame. I think it applies more to him than it did to me. And I quote Mark, it's been said that if an individual can have a lasting effect on one person, then that person has accomplished something very rare and special. If that is true, then what is it when a person has had a lasting effect on countless lives? I'm gonna miss it. I saw you today You were standing in the sun And you turned away And I knew it couldn't be 
but my heart believed Oh, it seems like there's something every day How could you be so far away When you're still here When I need you, you're not hard to find You're still here I can see you in my baby's eyes Laugh and cry You're still here Had a dream last night That you came to me on silver wings And I I flew away with you On a pain in the sky And I woke up wondering what was real Is it what you see in touch or what you feel Cause you're still here Oh, you're everywhere we've ever been You're still here You were standing in the sun and you turned away saint is simply somebody that has put their put that has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's what a saint is. That's what the Bible says. And you know, that's what Mark did many years ago. He heard the gospel. He understood it and he put Jesus as his Lord and Savior. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, chapters 8 and 9, that it's for by grace that we're saved through faith and it's the gift of God not of works so that nobody can boast in other words um, you can't be good enough to get to heaven you can clothe the naked and feed the hungry and give money to the poor and help all the grandmas across the street until the day you die it's not going to get you to heaven there's only one thing that will and that is putting your faith and trust in what Christ did on the cross for us 2,000 years ago Mark understood that and he put his faith and trust in Jesus. And he's now in heaven. And that's an awesome thing. That's a wonderful thing. The question is, is where will you go when you die? You know, the, body, the, the Bible says that this body uh, gets old and it's going to die someday. 100%. There's a difference, though, between your body and your spirit. The Bible says the spirit that's inside of each one of us is that part of us that that I like to think of it as like lives behind dry bulbs. It has emotions, laughs, and cries. That's your spirit. The Bible says your spirit will never die, ever, whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe in God. Your spirit that's inside of you would never die. 
body is getting older. In fact, um, as years go on, it starts to wrinkle up, and it seems like it starts to, to, to rot. And in fact, it seems like I need to put a little do more deodorant on every day. Why? Because my body is rotting slowly. I hate to tell you that. But your spirit, the Bible says, is renewed every day. The thing is, is that when your body dies, where will your spirit go? To live? Will it go to heaven, where there's, where there's rejoicing forever, or will it go to hell? The Bible talks about hell. It's a real place just like heaven is. And the Bible says that God did not make hell for people. He made hell for the, for the demons, not for humans. He wants everybody to be saved. And so I met with uh, some of the family, and I talked with them and explained to them that it's very important that, we, that I'm able to share the gospel. And they said, absolutely. It's very important. It would, that's what Mark would want. The Bible says that we need to be born again. And you might have heard that expression before, but it's in the Bible. And it's talking about, in the book of John, you can read it for yourself, as a man named Nicodemus. He came to Jesus at night, um, and he asked Jesus, he says, Jesus, uh, what must I do to be saved? And Nicodemus was the most religious guy back in Jesus' time, religious leader. And Jesus says, Nicodemus, um, you come and ask me these things. You should know these things. You're the most religious guy around here. Jesus says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, I don't understand. What do you mean, Jesus? I mean, you mean I have to go back into my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus says, no, that's being born of water. It even says it in the Bible, being born of water. We've all been born of water. In other words, from our mothers. When we came out, water came out. Um, Jesus says, your spirit must be born again. Until we put our faith and trust in Christ, the Bible says our spirits are dead. We need to put our faith and trust in Christ, and that is what Jesus is talking about, being born again. Mark heard those things. He heard that Jesus came and died for his sins, and that he had to put his faith and trust in him, and he made that decision. And the result is, he's in heaven now. In other words, when he said yes to Jesus, his, his spiritual passport was stamped. And he's now with the Lord forever. That is a, a wonderful, awesome thing. There was a man uh, in the Bible in Acts chapter 7, you could, you could read about him later, his name was Stephen. And uh, he was uh, one of the, the followers of Christ, and he gave this incredible message he preached to a bunch of uh, scribes and Pharisees back then. They got really upset with him. And it says in the Bible, they picked up stones to stone Stephen, and as they were stoning him, Stephen was dying. Uh, he said these words, he says, but Stephen, that is being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven. And he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Standing. Every other place in the Bible says that Jesus was seated at the right hand of the Father. But when one of his saints dies, like Stephen or Mark or you, if you're a believer in Christ, the Bible says that Jesus stands to receive us up into heaven. That's an awesome thing. God of the universe would stand to receive us. There's a, a verse also in the Bible in John. I love this. One of my favorite verses. John chapter 14. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and receive you to myself that where I am, there, there you may be also. That's where Mark's at right now, you guys. He's moved into his mansion in heaven. Now, we're, we're sad, but if you think about it, where Mark's at right now, you know what? He wouldn't, wouldn't want to, as much as he loves you guys, he would not want to come back here. Why? Because he's in heaven. That's where we were made to be. That's why God made people, is to have fellowship with him. But you know the whole Adam and Eve story and sin coming into the world. That, that uh, separated us from God. But when we put our faith and trust in Christ, it puts us back together. It renews our relationship with God again. And that's where Mark is right now. He's moving to his mansion. I don't know what kind of house he had here, but it ain't nothing compared to where he's at right now. And he's a very, very happy guy. We don't have to pray for Mark anymore. We have to pray for ourselves because the family, especially, are the ones that are going to miss him the most family and friends. Pray for them. 
The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians, it says, We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's awesome. There's no in between, you guys. To be absent from the body, you put your faith and trust in Christ. Absent from the body, the Bible says when our eyes close here on this earth, they open in heaven with Jesus. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I'd just kind of like to conclude the service with a, a, one more story from the book of Luke. Um, I love these, these stories. That, you know, there's um, there's stories that Jesus tells in the Bible that um, help us to think. But these, this one here is um, a real story. Whenever the Bible says there was a certain place or a certain person, it's real. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're told about two people. I'm sorry, in Luke 16, we're told about two people, a rich man and another guy named Lazarus, poor guy. This is the story. It says, there was a certain man, there's a word, certain man, who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day, a rich guy. Not that it's bad to be rich, it's not, that's not the point. He, just, he was a, a rich man. And it says that uh, he, would, well, he was not a believer, it says, but then there was a certain uh, beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at the rich man's gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, that is, Lazarus' sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels, and, and uh, the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, that is the rich guy. He lifted up his eyes, and he saw Abraham far off, and he saw Lazarus with him. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I'm in torments in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now Lazarus is comforted, and you're in torments. And besides all this, there is a great chasm, a great gulf, that's fixed between us. And you can't pass over to here, nor can we pass over to where you are. And then um, the rich man says, uh, then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him, as did Lazarus, back to my father's house where I have five brothers, that he may testify to them. At least they also come to this place of torment. Go, go warn my brothers. And Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, if one goes from the dead, they'll repent. But he said, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded that one rise from the dead. Or I would also add, uh, Moses, prophets, pastors, yourself, when you tell these people about Jesus. If they, if they deny us, they're not going to believe somebody comes back from the dead. And here this guy is he, is, he is in torments in this place, and he thinks of his five brothers back on earth. That means when we're there in heaven or in hell, we're going to have memories of what's, what, what's going on down here, our family. And he wanted somebody to go. He wanted Lazarus to go and warn, warn his five brothers that his five brothers wouldn't come to this place. Jesus tells us this story to warn us about hell. Did you know that Jesus talked more about hell in the Bible than he ever did about heaven? Why? Because he does not want people to go there. He loves you. If you were the only person on this entire earth, Jesus would have came and died just for you. That's how much he loves you. Individually, each one of us. He came and paid the penalty. He paid the penalty for our sin. We can't pay a penalty for our sin. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Remember back before Jesus' day, they had to kill a lot of animals back then uh, uh, to pay the penalty for sin because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Jesus, the Lamb of God, perfect, came and died on a cross 2,000 years ago to pay the penalty that none of us could pay. He would want you to know that. He sent me here to tell you about that today. And Mark would want you to know that. In fact, if Mark could speak to you from his mansion right now in heaven, this is what he'd say to each and every one of you. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your entire life. And for some of you young folks, there's important decisions to make here in this, in this world. Buy a house, buy a car, find a spouse. Very important decisions. But the fact is, is the house is going to fall apart someday. The car is going to rust and the spouse is going to die. 
the most important decision you can ever make in your life is where your spirit's going to go when your body dies. And you can make that decision right now before you leave this place. You can ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And I'm going to ask you to do that before we leave. That's how important it is. You may say, is that is it really the right thing to do with me? Absolutely. Never do we think more about where we're going to go in the afterlife than when we sit and say goodbye to a friend or a family member. It kind of hits home. <coughs> So we're going to pray right now, and it'll conclude the service. Um, so if you'd like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to lead you in a prayer during this prayer. And you can pray. And you can confirm where you're going to go when your body gives, gives up your spirit. Let's pray. Father, I just pray for each person here, Lord, uh, those that know you, those that don't know you. Those of us that know you, we're going to see Mark again someday. Soon and very soon, the way this world's going, it's crazy out there. And Lord, uh, we don't know if it's possible or not. The Bible doesn't say it's not. So if it's possible, uh, give uh, the family's love and the friend's love to Mark today. Tell them that they miss him and love him. And Lord, for those that don't know you, I pray that each one would take these words seriously. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the only thing that gives us hope in life, to know that, that not only do we have, will we have peace here on this earth, but, but um, we'll be able to be with you in heaven forever. Forever is a long time. It's forever. And that's where Mark is. And so with every head bowed and, eye, uh, bowed and, and every eye closed, nobody else looking around, it's nobody else's business but yours. You'll be the only one standing before God someday. If you'd like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now, um, lift your hand up. The Bible says that we're to uh, be public about our decision. And it's public enough if I see your hand. Does anybody want to accept Jesus Christ? Let your hand up. I see you, sir, in the back and in the front. Many of you to my right and my left. <coughs> Gosh, many of you. Anybody else right now? You're just raising your hand. You're acknowledging what your heart is saying. And that is, yes, I want to know for sure I'm going to heaven. Anybody else would like to do that? Okay, if you raise your hand, pray this prayer. You, you can say it out loud or you can say it quietly. It doesn't matter. God knows your heart. Uh, Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I put my faith and trust in you. Forgive me for my sins and save me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, you guys. You know what? Many of you made that decision, and I want to encourage you. It's the most important decision you'll ever make, like I said. It, it determines where, you, where you're going to spend eternity. And you're going to see Mark again someday. That's an awesome thing. Just a couple of things before I end. Those that made that decision, uh, very important. Like I, I was telling you about your body. You know, our bodies, we're going to, after this, some of you are going to go to the reception, or you're going to, some of you are going to go eat someplace. I know I am. Why? It keeps this body alive. Plus, we like to eat. Obviously, I like to eat. Um, but it keeps your body alive. What you need to do is to, to keep your spirit strong. Is sorry, read the Bible every day. It's it's how we feed our spirit is reading God's word. It's His word. Pray every day. Praying is simply talking to God. You can do it in the shower or driving down the road, or you can you can uh, do it uh, on your knees at a church. It doesn't matter. God just wants to hear from you. That's all. The other thing is is that you would uh, find a good Bible teaching church to go to. And your fellowship with other believers. It's very important, those three things. But don't let anybody tell you that that decision you made today was a farce. It is absolutely a fact, true, and you can know for sure now. In fact, you should know for sure. The Bible says that these things are written in the Bible that you may know you have eternal life. Why? Because God wants us to have hope in this life. And now there's no greater hope than knowing that soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Because like I said, the world's a rough place out there. It's hard. God wants to be there to help you. And, uh, we'll see Mark again someday. So uh, we'll continue to pray for, for the family. Stacy Scott, Pam, and the rest. Praying for you. God bless you. And uh, after service, I believe uh, you guys know where you're going. You have a reception right planned and everything. So let me just close in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this service. Thank you for your word. Lord, it's the, the only really 
true thing uh, in this life is your word. It never lies. It's perfect. And we're thankful for it. And, uh, Lord, we just uh, do pray for the family. That you would comfort them, give them a big hug and squeeze, help them to know how much you love them and you care about them. And it's good to know that uh, not only are we going to see you again someday, but we'll all get to meet Mark for the first time someday. And the family and friends will get to see him again. So, again, it's not goodbye. It's till we meet again. See you soon. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.